on to the next problem and begin working on it. All right, here's the prompt. In the country of Zestria, the monthly demand for good x is given by the function qd equals 420 minus 30p, where qd is the quantity per month and p is the price per unit in dollars. From the equation, identify the slope of the demand function given above. All right, now remember from our earlier lessons that the slope is not as straightforward as identifying the b variable. Rather, the b variable is the change in quantity over the change in price. That's what the b variable tells us, which is the same as saying the change in x over the change in y, or the run over the rise. The slope, on the other hand, refers to the rise over the run. So slope equals rise over run, which is change in y over change in x. In the case of price and quantity, we're really looking at change in p over change in q. Now we know that the b variable equals change in q over change in p, and that equals negative 30. So what is our slope? Our slope is the inverse of negative 30. So it's 1 over negative 30, which could be simplified as negative 1 over 30. That should be our slope of our demand equation. The next problem asks us to calculate the price at which the monthly quantity demanded would be 210 units. All right, so what do we do to solve this? We just plug in 210 for QD and solve for P. So I can use my equation and say that 210 equals 420 minus 30 times the price. Let's isolate the 30 over here. So I can say 30p equals, I'll move the 30 over here, and I'll move the 210 over here, subtract 210 from 420. I've got 30p equals 420 minus 210. Let's solve that quickly. 420 minus 210 equals 210. 210 and now I just solve for p, divide both sides by 30. And the price at which the quantity demanded is 210 units is 210 divided by 30. Again, an easy calculation we could do in our head, but we'll do it here. It gives us a price of $7. There's our answer. It's always a good idea to circle or outline your answers when doing these types of problems. Another calculation here. They want us to find the price at which 60 units are demanded. So I can plug 60 into my equation. And I've got 60 equals 420 minus 30p. I'm going to move my 60 over here. So I've got, and move my 30 over here, my 30p over here. So I've got 30p equals 420 minus 60. 420 minus 60 is 360. Divide both sides by 30. The price at which 60 units are demanded is 360 divided by 30, $12. Pretty simple stuff. All right, let's move on to the next part of this problem. Label the axes on the following grid. Okay, a softball. This one's easy. I've got the price and we've got the quantity. Easy enough. One point. Construct the demand curve for good x on the following grid. All right, how do we do this? I think the easiest place to start is to find the point that we know is on the demand curve. We know that the a variable in our demand equation, that's 420, is the quantity intercept of demand. So I'm going to go down to my q axis and see that we've got 400 and 500 and there's five little boxes in between, meaning that 420 is exactly right here on my horizontal axis. All I need to plot my demand curve is another point on the demand curve. To do that, I can just choose any other price. Why don't we choose $10 again, and we'll plug in P to our equation and solve for Q. So we know that QD equals 420 minus 30 times 10, in this case. 
Let's simplify that. QD equals 420 minus 300. And 420 minus 300 equals 120. So at a price of 10, 120 units are demanded. So that puts us right here. We have two points in our demand curve. We can connect these points. And that gives us our demand curve. You know what, just to be sure we did that correctly, I want to actually find the price intercept of demand, which is the price at which quantity demanded equals zero. So let's solve for the price intercept just to make sure we drew our graph collect correctly. Let's say zero equals 420 minus 30 times the price. I'm going to move the 30p over here. We've got 30p equals 420. Divide both sides by 30 to find the price intercept. So 420 divided by 30 gives me a price intercept of $14. And now we have proven that our demand curve is drawn correctly because this right here is $14, meaning that the quantity demanded is zero at a price of $14. Let's look at the next part of this problem. Outline why the position of the demand curve will change if the demand function changes to QD equals 500 minus 30P. Well, what's happened? If, if the A variable in our demand equation increases to 500, our entire demand curve is basically shifting to the right. But the B variable, which is the inverse of the slope, remains at 30 or negative 30. So the slope doesn't change, but the demand curve would move to the right. So I would answer this by saying that the demand curve shifts out because the quantity intercept increases. What's another way of understanding this? If our demand curve shifts to the right, what it's telling us is that at every price, at every price, let's say at every price, 80 more units are demanded because the A variable increased from 420 to 500. At a price of zero, 80 more units are demanded. At every other price, 80 more units are demanded than they were before. So that's one way of looking at what happens when the A variable increases in our demand equation. All right, the next question, outline how the steepness of the demand curve will change if the demand function changes to QD equals 420 minus 40P. All right, so what's changed here? Now the B variable has increased from 30 to 40. What does this tell us? This tells us that the inverse of the slope has increased. That's another way of saying the slope has decreased. Consumers are more responsive more responsive to changes in the price. For every one dollar increase in price, quantity demanded used to fall by 30 units, now quantity demanded falls by 40 units instead. So how is this going to actually affect our demand curve? Notice that in this case the A variable hasn't changed but the B variable has. So the impact this will have is a flattening out of our demand curve. We can show how that would look because now for every one dollar increase in price quantity falls by 40 what happens when the price goes up by $5? The quantity will fall by 200. So as the price now goes from zero to five, we're going to see quantity demanded fall by 200 instead of only 150. So we would see it's from 420 down to 220. We would have a new point on our demand curve here, causing the demand curve to flatten out as the slope becomes less steep. This is essentially the same as a decrease in demand. However, rather than the A variable changing, the B variable is changed, meaning that consumers are more responsive to price changes. So your instinct might be, 
if the B variable increases, then the slope will increase. But you have to remember that the B variable is the inverse of the slope. So as B increases, the slope actually flattens out because consumers are becoming more responsive to price changes. All right, we've walked through a couple different problems today in which we have applied our knowledge of linear demand and supply equations to answer IB style questions. These are the kind of questions you might see on an IB higher level paper three. And there are a lot more of these you could practice if you could get your hands on some past exams and put your knowledge of linear equations to work to prepare for future assessments. Thanks for watching. Here we go. One step back.